Uh, buongiorno a tutti, anche buongiorno, buongiorno a tutti, streaming. Before uh, starting uh, today, I just wanted to introduce you something that I'm, I'm, I've been using during these uh, sessions. This is a project uh, Enter. It's actually a network uh, organized to disseminate uh, other projects. And I've been using this uh, very useful network because there are very interesting projects in there. Uh, and uh, if you Google it and you, you find the, the, the link, it, it will be available on the platform that you can access. It would be interesting for you to use it because um, it's a group of projects that are well organized, successful, and you have a good idea of uh, the um, purpose of each action. It's not all the projects, uh, if I'm not wrong, are not linked to a Grunvig multilateral project. I believe there are also key activities and other kind of projects, and I believe it would be very useful for you to, to check it out and to uh, get inspired eventually from uh, this project, okay? Uh, for example, just for you to remember, I guess uh, here, this one, CESIT, is one that I've been uh, using. You will see it a bit later. This is a Grundvig uh, multilateral project. And if also I'm not wrong, I believe it's linked to an Italian partner. Um, and if I'm not wrong, I remember Oh, yeah? Excuse me. Um, uh, we try to internet. Okay. I, do you want to try? Okay. Yeah. So uh, I was saying <coughs> you're receiving a uh, lot of information. Sorry? <laughs> you want me to translate? Yeah, I was saying you're receiving a lot of information at the same time. And some, sometimes it's a bit difficult to connect the dots, you know, the document, the, all the legal aspects, the, the codes, the keywords, and all that stuff. And it's important to have a practical idea of what we are talking about. So the best way it would be to check the, uh, this uh, project, that, as we did, for example, for Delphi or for the others that I presented, and it gives you a good idea of what they, um, in, in concrete, in, in practical aspects, what it's uh, all about. For example, tackling an employment or tackling situation with uh, immigrants, um, addressing the situation of gender uh, uh, equality, any, any topic which is linked to, in this case, adult education and the Grunvig program would be a, a, a good example to, to, to follow and to understand how they, the logic behind this. And also you will, you will be familiar with all the, um, let's say, the usual uh, tools, uh, the usual uh, things that uh, appears in the uh, project, which is basically the definition of the project, the partner definition, the page with uh, the outcomes, eventually, if it was a project uh, uh, using an uh, e-learning platform or e-tool, uh, e e it will be available. You will also have uh, certainly a group of, uh, of documentation explaining the uh, evolution of the projects through uh, the minutes of the meetings. Uh, sometimes video pictures, so you understand a bit how it works. And, um, Maybe also an interesting point in most of the projects, the exploitation part, 
which is, for example, I give you a very uh, simple example. There was a very uh, interesting project that started two years ago. You remember uh, one of my focus is intercultural learning and intercultural learning under a bigger umbrella, which is global education. And this uh, project, Global Education Without Border, or Borders, uh, I found, uh, I was in a, a Congress uh, in September and I found this, um, these people and I get in contact to this, uh, with these people. And there's something that I will uh, explain uh, during the, the session today. And uh, I want to uh, uh, take advantage of the works of the uh, outcomes of what they've been doing in order to create another project. Okay? So uh, it's not only if you have an idea or if, you have, uh, if you've, you've been doing your initiating uh, works and you already know that uh, what you're going to plan is something interesting, innovative, but uh, this thing can take a good advantage of something that happened before. You don't just check the website, you don't check, just contact the, per the persons and say, hello, uh, this is a nice job, uh, I would like to use these ideas. No, you, you really get involved with them and in invite them to be part of the project, if obviously they are uh, willing to. And that's exactly what I'm, I'm preparing right now. I'm in contact with them, I was with them in Lisbon, and uh, I believe um, it's important to insist in this aspect. It's okay to bring new ideas. It's okay to start new things. But also, it's uh, whatever the, the, the way you're thinking about initiating your project or building your project, it's very important to take stock, to, to, to take information from what happened before. Because this is a, an evolution process. There have been things that have been created, these things have been tested, uh, improved, and you are uh, part of all this process. So that's why uh, the, Europe, the, the um, representative bodies created these platforms like EVE, like uh, the EST, European Shared Treasure, like uh, in uh, another program, called Leonardo da Vinci, there is a database called Adam. I wonder why Adam and Eve, but <laughs> it's Adam and Eve. Okay, you have Adam, Eve, the EST. Here you find all the uh, GMPs and different things. It is more for Leonardo. And these are uh, the uh, really special projects that have a really uh, interesting uh, impact. Um, another um, interesting website that uh, you can eventually uh, um, go through, that's the web, I don't remember exactly the, the, the link, but it's, um, it's all the Grundvig IST courses. which gives you an idea of, okay, you already know now, Grundvig is adult education, right? So when you look at it, when you look at these examples, these courses happening all months, everywhere in Europe, you have a good idea what what's it's uh, practically about, okay? For example, in September I was invited in a course on uh, managing small organizations, okay? This is, for example, uh, um, a, a type of, of uh, activity linked to Grundvig. It's not a Grundvig multilateral, it's under another action, IST. You have also what you call the Grundvig workshops catalog. This is also uh, an interesting uh, place to find information and to understand it better also because you remember
Sure. Uh, let's just me maybe close the files. Here you go. <laughs> I'm not a very good uh, designer. Okay, this is the lifelong learning program. Then you have Grunvig, Leonardo, Erasmus, Comienus. Okay, and then you have actions. Okay, and all this is adult education. Okay, all this is vocational. Uh, addressed to vocational people, uh, higher education, and second, secondary uh, education, schools, kids 10, 15. So, um, even if you're looking at an action which is not the Grundvig multilateral project, you will be sure that you will be in the framework of Grundvig. So it doesn't mean that you have to look at it and, okay, I, this is my idea, this is the idea. No, it's just to have uh, practical information, okay? Um, what else I could uh, tell you this morning? Oh, yeah, do you have a look at the uh, document that I passed? Yeah? Um, you remember we've been talking about the um, application form, the four documents? Well, in this case, you know, you'd have the PDF form, and then you have the four documents, the uh, description of the project, which is an um, MS Word document, and this, this is one on journal. And um, we, will go through, yeah, we will go through the document today, also a bit in a supersonic way. But uh, uh, thanks to the activities. By the way, did you enjoy the activity yesterday? The uh, Samoan Circo, did you find it interesting? Someone, some, some of you already knew this, this uh, method, no? First time? A bit? Oh, you know, all the, we all have our little <laughs> input. Um, so yeah, today we will, um, I will, I will give you a, a glance, a glance mean a short view of each part, but what is important is to understand the logic of the document, its connection with the other document, which is basically the, um, uh, applic the uh, Adobe Acrobat applica application form, part A and B, and also uh, B2, the objectives, the priorities, the transvers transversal uh, and horizontal uh, policies, so the connection between Adobe Acrobat document MS Word document, which is the description of the project, and the uh, Excel tab, which is the budget, okay? So, this uh, Word document is a bit the um, skeleton, okay? Holding this, uh, this other information, and you want to be sure that what you're writing in all documents is perfectly aligned, perfectly coherent. So. Uh, the moment you start uh, writing your project in the Word document, you have a pretty good idea of what you're going to do. You're not starting from there. No, first you have a, a, a kind of a confusing draft. Okay, you have a draft. You've been initi initi initiating your project. And then, before you start writing your project, you have a clear idea of the main information that you are going to put in the, in the document, okay? For example, the aim, uh, the objectives, the methodology, how are you going to, to do to reach your objectives. You have a pretty good idea also on the budget. Actually, you have it quite, quite well prepared. Now you're just putting the information on the right place in the documentation. That's so you are at the programming. Actually, you have you are at the writing of the programming works you've been doing. 
programming planning. Okay? Uh, well, if, obviously, if you have some experience already on, on writing project under this, this action, of course, you can start putting things that you already know, but actually, you will start applying, really, when you have a very concrete idea of what you're going to do at all level. Now I need my PowerPoints because if I keep if I keep going speaking, well, it's maybe a difficult. No. Do you have access? Uh, you? Uh, that's, uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, I, well, that's why I asked. You have access, yeah. yeah. Okay, I understand. So maybe something. He got confused yesterday because of the. Um, that's okay. Okay, so for you to be uh, to understand clearly which document we are talking about, we're talking about this one. Okay, it's uh, circulating. Can you see it? Yeah, it's not too bright. So <clears throat> this uh, word document. Yesterday we've been looking at the um, Adobe Acrobat document. Uh, so here you have. You will see that we have all these, you know, uh, codes and little characters and all that stuff. That's the document, okay? We will go through each um, part and then you will uh, have an idea of how it, uh, how it works. Okay, so... Uh, the main objective of this session is to understand well how this document works, these logics, and how uh, you have to be so careful to write this document according to because actually what you're doing, you're writing your project, but just you use using different fields. Okay, one field would be the, the budget, another field will be the MS Word document, the other field was is the Adobe Agrobat document. So all this is the same thing, and all this is uh, really uh, have a very good cohesion, okay? Um, <clears throat> a specific objectives. Well, uh, we will see the structure of the document, so you will understand the logic behind it. Uh, the basic rules also, uh, to fill the document, you have uh, very good help from uh, the the EACA team. You have this documentation to to help you to, such as for example the instruction for applicants, the guides. We've been through this documentation yesterday. I will remember you uh, this this um, documentation. 
well, when you want to give your information to someone, you have to be clear. You have to use very s short sentences and you have to be very uh, uh, direct, straightforward to what you are going to say. Okay? So we, we are going, this is, this is not something that you can easily um, uh, transmit to, to a learner, but uh, we will try to understand and to focus on how to, f to, to concentrate on the important uh, information, okay? Oh, sorry, MS means uh, Microsoft Word. Yeah, yeah. GMP is a Grundvig multilateral project. I I'm very sorry, you were not uh, here before. This the first time in this well, morning? And uh, what about, uh, you were talking about the, um, uh, some document, ESET, to, uh, to look uh, for the basic rules for filling the form. You were talking about uh, uh, a document or a platform to visit, uh, no. Yes, actually, uh, when you, uh, before you apply, you go to uh, the, the website. You access the website of the uh, agency, mm -hmm. which uh, is uh, responsible for the management of the program. And in this uh, website, you have um, a variety of documents that are very important for you to use, either for the application itself, or for, do, do you mind quickly, I'll, I'll show quickly what, what I'm talking about. Uh, I guess uh, if I find it quickly, no. Okay. This e form is the uh, online application of the project, and the, the document uh, we are talking about this morning is the MS Word, Microsoft Word, uh, which uh, is the description of the project that will, you will attach to the e form, Adobe Acrobat e form, and you will attach also all these three documents. So that's what we are. Today we will uh, go through the first document, okay? But if, if, you, if you need more information, more, later on we, we can... Okay. So... Uh, accuracy. Accuracy is the uh, precision, okay? Accurate means you, you put an information that is very precise, okay? This is uh, also very important. Remember the evaluator? I'm, I'm always referring to the evaluator. Uh, don't, don't take it as, okay, I have to think as the evaluator. I mean, you have to put yourself a bit in his shoes or her shoes to understand that he don't have time. He must understand fast, very well, and most of all, he must or she must understand in a clear way the whole process. Okay? <clears throat> All right. Uh, maybe um, let's go. Let's go directly with the document, and then we will review. Okay. Um, first of all. Uh, on the Adobe Acrobat, you have the, the beginning of the description of the project with the part e, um, A, which is the uh, abstract, uh, no, it's the uh, applicant uh, information, the part B with the abstract, and the, bar, the part B2 with the um, reference to the objectives, to the specific object, operational objectives, etc. Part C uh, is the beginning of um, the information on who is going to be part of the partnership, okay? The first, the first partner is always uh, 
the applicant. So when you, this is a Word document that you can use. You use it and you change things. There are some rules on changing this document, but you basically, okay, select one. And here, for example, if you, uh, you know that um, you have, uh, let's say, to simplify, hmm, where is the delete here? I have another trick. <laughs> okay, let's say you have three partners. So P1, P2, P3. So you do it. Okay, you write it. Very important. You have to, you, you check, it's too small, you can't see it really, but you have to be very careful at every line, every word, every part of the document. Be patient, read it, be sure to understand it before doing anything. Sometimes we, we, uh, we look at it and, oh yeah, both, come on, it's obvious, my QI, IQ is, no, no. Go back to it and read it carefully. Again, you have here, this part must be completed separately by each organization participating to the project. <sighs> Come on, it's, it's, it's important also because you are in a partnership. You're supposed to have partners. Partners are not uh, strangers. Partners are people you've been contacting, connecting, talking to, uh, discussing, arguing, whatever. Partners are people you work uh, with every day, even if it's in Australia or in the States. So the fact, the fact uh, it's my interpretation, the fact that it's important for them to fill in the, the information themselves, it's because also they, it's a, let's say, a, a matter of responsibility, accountability. You are the applicant, you're responsible. You're the top of the, the maximum responsibility, okay? But also you want your partner to get involved. So your partners are going to write what they do, what they, their activities, and you also will see, uh, they, they will have to put the key staff that will be involved in the project. So you think two, two situations. I want to be efficient, I want to be fast, but I want to be also, um, um, let's say, um, efficient in a way that my partners understand perfectly clearly what we're doing with this project. So again, my way of uh, doing things is I ask the partners to fill in this part themselves. They send me only this part, not the whole document. So in a way, uh, it's very easy uh, to take this document you eliminate, you eliminate all the parts, you keep only the part, uh, part C, you fill in the, your part, imagine I'm in Portugal, I give all the information, and I send it to you in Italy, with a file name that I would be able to recognize, okay? And then you copy this part to the, the final form, okay? It's a copy-paste thing, but you're copying something that someone took the responsibility to do. Okay? It's efficient. Um, the after, after, um, after that, you have... Um, this uh, C1 aims and activities of the organization that I, I, I explained right now. Uh, we will go, go back to it, huh? don't worry. Uh, just take a look at the structure. The C2 is the operational capacity, uh, skills and expertise of the key staff involved in the project network. So you, you can see here, name of the staff, summary of the skills, so it's a table. Okay, so C1, the organization, C2, the staff. Okay, that's the beginning of, of your uh, project. 
again, when you look at C1, I'm very sorry, you, you, you actually you can't look at it because it's too small. Um, you provide a short presentation of your organization, key activities, affiliations, size of the organization, etc., relating to the domain covered by the project. It's not a everything. Imagine your organi organization is the uh, UNESCO. <laughs> it's so many things they do. So if you are, uh, you are to uh, give information on your organization, be sure that this information is critical for the purpose of the project and fit within the purpose of the project. Any box you can see in any part of the documentation must be linked to the project. It's a bit obvious maybe what I say, but uh, if you say, for example, that one of your activity was to imagine the project was, is about um, creating a condition for immigrants to better integrate in small communities in isolated area. This is quite precise. Well, you don't want to put here, for example, a survey that you did uh, with, um, with um, Environment Association on the survival of the, golfin, the, the, delphins, uh, the dolphins in the rivers of Portugal. It's beautiful, but nothing to do with this. Okay? Um, then you have, <coughs> uh, please, please describe also the role of your organization in the project. Provide information on the operational and financial management of the project within the organization. Okay? So these are uh, quite precise information you have to put in this part. And all the partners will have to, to, to fill this uh, information. Okay? So to, to do that, you just, let's say, okay, you just select what you have to fill in. You can help yourself with this. Copy. That must be, uh, yeah. And paste. You change partner two. Okay. Get rid of this. Eventually, you can insert a break page. Can you follow what I'm doing? Okay, P1. P2. Simple. And so on. Until you fill all the three, in this case, three partners. Okay? All right. <clears throat> Here, there is a, a bunch of information that I would like to transmit to you about this, uh, this part. Well, uh, I said that the, the first partner is always the uh, applicant. Um, when you see, you know, this, this exeter, extra <laughs> is very small and very short, but be sure that it means a lot of things. Okay, key activities. Well, by key activities, um, you, an activity is something that happens, okay? It's not, oh, we used to, we survey, we know. So you be concrete about that, okay? One concrete activity is, for example, right now I'm writing a report on a survey on anticipating skills to tackle the situation of obsolescence. This is really concrete, okay? This is an activity. 
So whatever you say on this, uh, on, on, on all part of the project, you have to be very precise and concrete. Um, other activities, products that you sell or you deliver, such as uh, training courses, such as uh, events, uh, cultural events eventually. I mean, everything that you, it's co really concrete, is a final product, but it's also linked to the project. So it, in a way, the evaluator will have a concrete idea that what you're saying to him is you have experience on the matter, the topic of the project, because you've been working on tangible uh, results, such as products. Okay? Am I too fast? English is okay? Okay? For everyone? Okay. Um, <clears throat> a service can be also, for example, a career guidance, a council, okay? You receive uh, students in a field linked to the project and you give career, uh, career guidance to, to these people. Should they go to PhD? Should they go to a master? Should they find a job? Okay, within this information, within this topic. Another uh, kind of um, uh, concrete um, product linked to this activity can be a publication. For example, if you, you have a project on immigration and you've been uh, uh, creating a survey in, in, in your country about the specific uh, situation of these immigrants and uh, you had this book published or uh, booklet published, this is a concrete activity. So you can eventually, eventually this, this book is linked with the uh, website and, website, and the eventually the, the evaluator can go to the website and check, even better. Okay? These are activities. And these activities are described um, in a better way by the name of the project activity or the name of the product activity. And for example, you can say that the, uh, your training course have been, um, uh, have reached 2,000 people, okay, 200 people. Be concrete, okay? We have this training course that we have been um, providing for the last two years and we have reached at this point 200 people. This is what you have to put here. At least this, is, this is the kind of structure you have to put on the document. Okay? Um, affiliations. Well, it's basically, uh, I don't have concrete example to, to give you, to you, but um, it's, it's, it's the, the way that you are linked to Europe also. For example, maybe you're part of the trade union or the chamber of commerce or the chamber of crafts of your uh, local area. And because of this uh, affiliation, uh, you are linked to a European uh, framework or European association that time to time you would uh, participate in some events. Okay, so your affiliations are also not only these networks, but eventually your affiliation to other companies. Imagine that uh, your organization is, is a, a part of another bigger company. Okay? For example, in my case, uh, I, have a, I have a position on a company, Waterpolis, but this company have a business unit that after one year uh, made a spin-off and created a, a new company called Horizon. And it's an NGO, a non-profit. So this is an affiliation. Okay? So you give an idea to the evaluators of the structure of your organization. That's my interpretation of affiliation. The structure of your organization within other structures and also links that you have with other organizations. <clears throat> what? Why? Uh, Why it is important? For the uh, when uh, you go to be evaluated, if, uh, for the, evalu the final well, evaluation. Well, obviously it's difficult to say because uh, 
I don't have uh, such an experience that give me the answer to, but I have this philosophy when, when in, in doubt, there is no doubt. So whatever, whatever the, uh, the topic, whatever, the, whatever the, what they ask me to write or to say, I consider it 100% important. I believe one aspect of the importance of the affiliation is to, for them to understand how your structure is connected with other organizations and maybe other organizations have applied to projects and have, uh, have uh, received grants, you know. I can choose to draft um, a Grunbig for a meeting or something so I can remember there is a difference between uh, the Grunwig to know the other partner in the Europe to kind of Grunwig. I know. I'm not sure. Just well for uh, for meet some other partners. Uh, uh, I don't know the uh, the word in Italian and in English. Uh, truth. You can say in Italian. Maybe I. Um, I, I don't know in Italian too. What's the, the name for the kind of Grunwig? Non so se qualcuno di voi lo conosce. Il Grunwig quello di contatto. Uh, the seminar of contact. Ah, uh, contact so seminar. I, no, I don't not, have affiliation, not, but no, affiliation, I have a affiliation is really the, the structure of the organization within other structures. Yes, but if, if I choose for a Grunwig uh, like that, uh, seminar of contact, it means I, I don't have affiliation. So I'm looking for some affiliation. Uh, uh, but in this case, well, since we are preparing the Grunwig multilateral project, this application is on an action called Grundvig Multilateral Project, okay? So obviously it obey to the rules or to the, the framework, to information on this, this action. Uh, other actions have different, uh, let's say, different uh, information they need to, for you to fill in, so, okay? In this case, I really, um, um, it, it means the, the, the fact that you link it to other structures, either prof profit or non-profit, Okay? Uh, <clears throat> well, the size of uh, the organization is also something quite concrete. Oh, we are a big company. I think I'm a big company. We are just 12 of us. But spiritually, we're big. Uh, no, be concrete. Number of uh, staff. Um, literally, uh, our company was established in 2009 under a legal status of private SME we have reached now 20 staff etc right? it's very concrete this is and uh, you can eventually mention that you have a facilities our company is organized with a facility room to facilitate the training courses eventually so also short, but very concrete. Remember that the more qu quantitative you are, the more precise you are and the more clear you are. Okay? Qualitative uh, information is uh, submitted to um, subjective uh, interpretations. Okay? What's big for me might be small for you, etc. Not yet in this C1, okay? She was asking if we have to, to give some information of, on, on the profile of the staff. We will see that uh, we have this information to fill in here, okay? So this is the operational... Sorry? Yeah, just a number. If you're applying for a project in which you are asking for uh, 300,000 uh, euros and your staff, you are two people, I don't know, unless, I mean, it's possible, imagine Einstein, he could, okay, but it's just for you to understand that 
It doesn't give an answer uh, on your capacity clearly to the um, evaluation uh, team, but come on, you have to be a bit coherent, coherent, okay? Maybe you only have three staff engage full-time on the project, full-time meaning during the project, but you have a kind of capacity, okay? I couldn't do this, all, all this preparation uh, here without the support of uh, very uh, good staff that I work with, okay? Um, yes, what else? Deezer, déjà. Hmm. Okay, short key information, such as, for example, the date of the establishment of your organization, the legal status, the main activity core topics, the core topics, the core subject you're working with, as linked as possible as the project, the target groups you're working with, uh, project examples, technical and operational aspects of these projects. I mentioned publications, for example. The funding structure of your organization. Do you receive grants from donation, from private equities? Are you rich? Things like that. Um, number, for example, of uh, training courses I mentioned you're organized during the last two, three years and how many people you reach, etc. Um, eventually, an idea of the European dimension. For example, if you the last okay the last two years, I've been doing this kind of activities in uh, more than twenty uh, different member states. So I can say eventually that my organization, through my activity, have a European dimension at a small scale. But I've been around. Okay. Um, inter interconnection eventually with uh, European policies. Imagine that you've been uh, doing something concretely on a project using or based upon a European policy. You can refer you to you here also. This is very concrete. We've been following, uh, de developing this project under the policy of uh, new skills for new jobs. Um, Eventually, you might have also recommendations from some uh, organizations in Europe because you've been working with them. Maybe eventually you've been working in a team with the uh, European qualification uh, 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 framework or uh, the CEDEFOP, eventually. Oh, uh, if you have, for example, uh, a quality uh, status under uh, ISO or national, it's good to refer it uh, here in, in this part too. So, I know it's a bit uh, fast, but I guess you have an idea of what to put here. We will, we will uh, have an activity on it, so you will see a bit more concretely what, I, what, all is, uh, what this is all about. Um, there is this part, the role of your organization in the project. So, we didn't... Uh, I'll talk about that uh, yet, but your project have a work plan, and this work plan means different work packages. Okay, you have your uh, project, and the project is made of work package packages. One, two, three, four, etc. And let's say eight. These work packages are uh, things that have to be done for the, prog for the project to, to happen, to be um, constructed. And you will see that, in general, each work package is linked to a partner. For example, package one is management, package two is mapping, surveying. It's logical. First, uh, here you might have, for example, a package which is the development of a training course or a curricula or a pedagogical
methods. Okay? And etc. So at this point, you will have uh, the um, responsibility to write, well, our organization within the project will be the leader of the work package number. In this case, for example, the, generally, it's not often, but generally the first partner, the applicant, maybe because sometimes he also feels very responsible, <laughs> uh, leads the management work package, which is the big time coordination of the, all the project. It's, let's say, uh, usual that uh, this uh, situation happens. So you will just write uh, in a simple form that you are going to lead this, um, this uh, 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 work package. And also how this part is obviously too important. The, the way you, you, you in, a, in a project that you, you uh, develop with different partners, you have plans for everything, for communication, for uh, reporting, for uh, storing documentation, and obviously you also have a methodology, a plan to manage the financial part. So here it's important also to explain um, how you're going to manage. I mean, your partner uh, in uh, Turkey uh, is uh, responsible for a work package and he needs to buy a computer or a machine. You need to explain uh, it's in a in very simple way how you are going to manage this. For example, uh, and you will see also that at some point of the project the information you need to provide the um, uh, financial, financial arrangement that you have with your partners. Oh yeah, just for you to understand, on the Grudwig multilateral project, the applicant receive all the money. And not all the money in uh, one bunch, but uh, he's the one, he's the receiver. And then, and then he distributes the money. Okay? So when you're talking about the financial management, you're talking about that. Any question at this point? Is that all right? Okay. Yes, uh, I forgot to mention something very important also. That's the limitation of the characters. I mentioned that yesterday and, and, and the days before. When you work with your part partners and you, your partners are helping you writing the project, be sure that the information they deliver to you, you don't have to check and cross-check and cross-check, etc. You, you have your partners uh, informed and they know that they have this limitation of characters and they check it for you and they put it there for you to be sure that they are aware about that because, uh, again, if, if you, in this case, if you have too much characters, well, you're going to uh, irritate the uh, evaluator. You you're going to have uh, some, some situations here. So be careful about the number of characters. Okay? And also, the number of characters uh, somehow, pay attention, somehow, I'm not saying it is, but it gives you an idea of the importance of the part. But come on, if you have only 500 characters to write, compared to 6,000 or 4,000, hmm, it's logical. They want to, okay? All right. Okay. Um, C2. Here, what I'd like to, to tell you is um, first, uh, first uh, thing that you can check there's no character limits. Okay? Nowhere. And also, it's not add lines, it's please be my guest. 
Show me how good you are, how prepared you are, how your staff is strong and have a good experience and good skills on what you're going to do together. So, obviously, you don't want also here to put a bunch of, uh, you know, uh, 10 people. Just put the right people. Uh, you have here a responsibility, this is very important, uh, to, uh, to explain how uh, your staff is well prepared to manage, to work, and to develop the project. And also help your evaluator to understand the level of your staff. Okay? How can you, some of you uh, here work on the international standards of quality, ISO? There is also a system, international system, that helps you to give a good idea of the level of the education, for example, of your staff. Okay? It's the uh, ISCD, International Standard for Certification on, in Education. So you have different levels. This document, uh, this document is uh, available in the platform. And you have also, for example, the uh, Bologna process at, at my time when I did my fifth year in uh, the last year of engineering uh, I had some kind of a big word you know a big word a diploma now it's just a master everyone know understand the master okay so you use that because you have to structure the information in a way that um, imagine that you receive an information key staff 1, key staff 2, key staff 3 and so on okay and here you start with education level and here you, you, you write a, a, a publication the staff uh, did uh, here eventually uh, uh, work experience okay for example you put the education publication work experience and uh, um, I don't know, uh, uh, let's say for example uh, a, speciali a speciality. Sorry? A speciality, for example, uh, he's a, it's an expert in uh, uh, ant uh, skill anticipation. He's an expert in data mining, collecting information, analyzing and putting it in graphics. It's specialized the same this is not this is not something written somewhere do like this I'm not saying to you do like this I'm suggesting to you do like this okay but you're free to organize so this this evaluator will have eventually a very quick glance at the education level very quick glance at the uh, working experience and all that stuff. So these are short resumes. And also here, well, obviously you don't have a character limitation. If you like yourself very much, you can write 20,000 characters eventually, but don't do that. Be short. I don't know, uh, I would say more or less. Okay? There's no limitation either in staff involved. But uh, 20 people, maybe 3 people, 4 people, it depends on your project. Because remember, uh, well remember, later you will see that when you're filling the form and when you're explaining the budget, you will have to put the staff cost. Okay? So, if your project is logical, if your project is organized, you know how many staff you will need and how it will work. 
And also, just for you to have an idea, when you look at the... Um, yeah? The, the, sorry about that. In the staff members, we can include uh, also experts uh, out of our organization, uh, or only employees? Uh, by staff, they mean contracted staff. Okay, legal staff. If you work with experts that you will involve in this project, you will subcontract. We have an organization with members uh, without uh, contract, but we are members of the organization, so we have staff members. But if uh, we have a, a project approved, we have to, uh, to have a contract for the project. I don't know if... <laughs> well, okay, then you answer the, uh, the, the question, okay? Staff... mean legally part of the organization. Obviously, from, states, from member state to, to member states, there are different kind of link, legal links, so you have to check. But the uh, formal uh, known way of your staff in your companies are a contract. For example, I'm a manager of my organization. I don't have a contract because on the legal status of uh, the company in Portugal, the fact that I'm a uh, uh, gerente gives me a link, legal link with the company. I don't need a contract. I, I would sign my own contract. Hey, Bruno, I recruit you. Oh, fantastic. So contract is a legal formal link between your staff and the company. Yes, because now, uh, in the official uh, book of uh, members in, of the organization, uh, all, of, uh, all uh, of our staff uh, is in, uh, but without a contract, but is a, a legal document. Well, that's what I'm saying. In Italy, it's one thing, you know. consider a part of my staff uh, uh, an expert outside my organization? Well, since I'm not an expert uh, in, in law, and even less in Italian law, I think you should, on that aspect, you could ch check that with your, for example, your national agency. What are... Okay, la, okay? La, la LLP agency, you mean? What, what I mean is staff by, in, in the application is a legal worker of your company. Meaning, he's got a contract. I mean, he's got a document proving he's working with you. He's got a payroll sheet. You know, each month he receives a sheet with uh, the, the amount you're paying to him. It means also you or him, or according to the structure of your country, you pay your tax and your social, uh, social uh, responsibility. So you think uh, we have, you think we have to ask to our LLP agency in Italy? Well, so I'm suggesting that because I don't know how it works in Italy. I'm not sure they can, they know <laughs> the answer to. No. Oh. So then you can they are ask. Not legal, you know the best way. Your accountant. Uh, your accountant will know. He he knows. In Portugal, if you don't, if the company don't pay the t uh, tax, if there is no document, document, it's not legal. It's illegal. It's a subcontract. Okay? So by staff, you mean people linked officially with your company. So that's important because uh, very often we got a little uh, organization uh, who would participate uh, to be part of uh, this project uh, at uh, European level. So we are, but we are a little organization, so we don't have 
many Maybe stuff uh, into under a status of association, it might be different. So you have to, you have, well, uh, if your national agency is a bit um, uh, not very uh, organized with that, you have to check. You can simply, for example, also that I suggested to one of uh, the participants, you can find uh, an organization like Synergia who applied. They know. You can find also, uh, you can contact the help desk. You, you can go eventually to the FAQ. You can look at the do documents on the definition. Obviously, I doubt that they have a definition of staff for every country in an uh, eligible country, but somehow it's easy to find the information. You know, a week ago I, I uh, assisted a webinar of a conference in, uh, in Brussels on applications. And even there, there, was, there were uh, different differences between the national agency and what the um, executive agency in, in, um, was saying. And by the way, it was the national agency of Italy. So. I mean, it was an Italian uh, company, so maybe there's something here. OK. The computer is already a bit tired. Um, yeah. Very important also. E. OK, education, publications, work experience, speciality, language. This is not exhaustive. Exhaustive means I'm telling you everything you should know. No, this is major. This is very important. Then you will check maybe some. Okay, language is interesting and important. Please put staff who uh, have some experience. For example, I mean, if you're applying in a European centralized project or even a European project, and please don't be offended about that. But if you apply and you, you don't, you can't follow English. It's an issue. There is a little problem. Um, so be sure to mention English here. You don't need to be uh, some kind of uh, Einstein of English. Myself, I speak an English, uh, Latin English, said him, you're right. Well, I'm not some kind of uh, genius, but I can express myself. And you can communicate with your partner. Can you imagine if you manage a project with a lot of money and you can't communicate? You have to. So I would suggest for you to use uh, this to put this information and also, by the way, to use the Europass uh, framework. Europass, everyone? You know what it is? Europass is. Um, is a tool uh, created by uh, this body, this organization called Europass, which is part of the European Union, uh, European Commission. And it's a, a way of structure, organize your resume. OK? I've used the Europass uh, CV. And I always wondered how long it should be on a, if you uh, apply on a European level. Because, for example, in Austria, if you write a CV, it should be two pages maximum. But then when I used the, um, this, the Europass CV, it, there's such a lot of information. And if you like, specify in a detailed way what languages you speak, you end up with, I don't know, five pages. Do you have any reference? What's the maximum length of such well, a Europass um, CV? I'm checking my CV because I'm not sure if what I'm going to say is, is true. Maybe my CV has three pages, but I think my CV has um, two pages. Let me just check something here. Because I think, I think it's very different from country to country, so I was wondering what's sure. the European uh, no, consensus. A Europass. 
first, let's say, let's see a uh, Europass thing. A Europass is a CV, you know, organized with work experience, <clears throat> education and training, and each, each, uh, each, um, you see the structure? Okay, it's, it's, it's really, it's, it's, it's what, what we call a template. And this template is the same for everybody. Okay. Huh. Fortunately, I didn't say anything. It's four pages. Well, on, on, on big projects, it's, it's okay to have uh, four pages. In here, they don't ask you to put your CV. They ask you to put the information, pertinent information, but what I suggest, it's not said, you don't have to do it, but I suggest is to use the European framework of information. Any evaluator will understand if you say um, work experience or uh, education without Europass. You don't need that. But when it comes, for example, for languages, then it would be maybe interesting for you to use the, lang the, the language, the common framework for uh, languages. It's called the European Language Passport. Okay? If I say, for example, here, uh, mother tongue French, here, you, you, you're not familiar with this uh, structure? Yes? Okay. So if you say C2, or for example, C1, you see my English level? I don't even go to C2, I, I keep at C1. Because I'm C1, I'm, I, I'm in my comfort zone. If you go to Edinburgh, Edinburgh, on a conference, believe me, even your C2 is <laughs> maybe uh, A1. So, if you use this structure, uh, the guys will understand your level. Okay? If you say good English, or even other thing. So I suggest, this is a Europass structure. It's, it's very easy to find it out in, uh, in, um, in, on the internet. You remember? Google is a superhero. Hero. <coughs> so, uh, yeah, A, B, C, D, E, language. Uh, thousand, thousand five hundred characters. Well, for example, if you have a very pertinent information about what's going on in the project on a topic and it takes time to explain or, well, link it to a website, link it to a publication. The coffee, the coffee this morning was uh, weak because I'm too slow. Okay, um, any question at this point? Okay, we've been, we've been through the part C. Let me uh, just go through um, maybe some things that I would like to... This last four... I found something interesting yesterday. <laughs> I don't like it because it makes me look like a, some kind of a teacher or something. Okay, this is, this, it's because I'm short, you know, I'm not like Arcangelo. Arcangelo is a basketballer, he's... Okay, these this four last parts. Uh, are something you can add also in, the, um, in the, your uh, uh, presentation of your organization. Okay? This funding structure capacity is interesting for the evaluator because this is not of financing. Europe do not finance. 
Believe me, they co-finance. You take responsibility. We help you. They, they help you, not me. <laughs> uh, I mean, not yet. Okay, uh, I think I've been through that. Yes, um, on part C1 also, it's important to mention your responsibilities uh, regarding your partners. It means, for example, that you are uh, responsible to coordinate the communication within the partnership. You are responsible to motivate, to stimulate, to organize things, okay? Well, in this case, it depends on the work package, obviously. I'm one, I was referring right now on the management, okay? Also, uh, in the management part, sometimes, no, sometimes not, but if you look at the work package number one, responsibilities versus uh, agency and other EU NLP body, for example, in this case, Grundvig Multilateral Project, you are... Um, you must go to Brussels twice a year to give answers, to report. It is mandatory. You don't have the choice. So you can mention that you know that here. It's mandatory anyway, but saying that, uh, also you can mention that um, you have uh, some, some kind of a Imagine that you involve another uh, European agency in your project. You can eventually mention it here. Okay? These are, these are uh, some kind of a, a grouping information on different projects I've been participating in and how we did it. But it depends on your project. It's not a law, not a rule. It's just for you to remember. Um, yes, the, um, the work package tasks that you are going to, um, to provide in a very short sentence. Okay, for example, mapping, surveying, okay? I'll be responsible of surveying and uh, identifying all good practices on tackling immigration in rural areas in the U European Union member states. This is mapping. Um, just for you to have an idea, that's what I wanted to mention. This is an example of uh, distribution of work packages, okay? It means uh, the, here, for example, the concept of, the, uh, of the, the thing that you're going to do, testing, etc. So, for example, if you're the leader of the management work package, this is your core work in the project. It doesn't mean that you don't even know what they are doing, the guys. Do your job. No, you're involved also uh, at all level and even if you're responsible for example only on testing in the in the project well maybe you will give uh, some assistance to the work package one leader for example if you're responsible of testing so you do your job, you test the, the training course, for example, but then you report and you give information to the work package uh, management and you give also the information to the other one. Okay? So whatever the work package you're responsible to, when you, it comes to you to fill in your part, you also explain what you are going to do in other work packages. Am I clear? Repeating, imagine that um, I am in the dissemi di dissemination work package. That's my favorite because it means I have to move in different places. Well, I will certainly also help or assist or uh, at one point uh, be part of the other work packages. There's one situation where you all together, it's called the transnational meetings. You meet during two or three years, maybe three or five times. At this moment, you, you gather and, and you, you, you have some kind of a 
status of the project. You, you do a lot of uh, reporting, monitoring where we are and all that stuff. Okay, so for example, this is always, here you can, if I'm responsible of dissemination, I will write, um, we will also participate in transnational meetings and we will be re responsible of uh, reporting our activity. For example, okay? I think I mentioned that, mentioned that. Let me see if I have something else before D. Yeah, here I've been mentioning that, but... Okay. The more European dimension you don't do it in pur on purpose, but the more European dimension you have in your, at each part of your project, the more you show to, uh, to the EACEA your knowledge of the framework. It means something, it's important for the evaluator. He knows what you're talking about. Okay? That was fast. <laughs> Uh, I don't know if you have any question uh, at this point. Okay. Um, I would like to suggest a very short recess of maybe five, ten minutes because the next part is uh, heavier. We are, uh, we, we, at, at this point we were looking to the horse, now we are going to ride the horse. And it's, it's the heaviest part, it's not the heaviest part, but D, D is where you can't fail. D is what will define everything. So if you agree, Pia, I don't know if you agree with that, a short recess. Okay. Okay, um, I was, I was uh, telling you uh, in the first session about the organizations that will be part of the uh, project. Now, the part D refers to the description of the project and it's quite comprehensive. It's a lot of things. So. My first, um, my first uh, uh, idea to tell you is this is the brain, okay? This is the, the thing that will organize your, uh, this is a very interesting field of in investigation. I don't, I don't know if you like neuroscience, but oh. That's impressive. Anyway, um, the objective of this session is basically to understand how to fill in the part D of the, uh, this uh, application form document that you still have in your hands um, for this uh, project. It's okay. Keep it. If, if you want to keep it, no, no. You can keep it and circulate it if you want. No problem. Uh, and the specific objective is to understand the structure of, uh, by structure I mean the organization of this part, the basic rules of feeling, which are uh, written in very small characters, and I developed it a bit. You know when, when you read uh, C1 and the little characters be, uh, um, underneath? Objectivity and simplicity, well, it's a bit uh, repetition and redundant, but believe me, it's important. And uh, the accuracy of the, of the content. Okay, the D1 part is basically the why, which is the why you link to the, the fantastic word rational. Okay, the rational is the why. Why this? Why this and not another thing? Why? 
We will go to the structure before, for you have, to, you have the big picture, and then we go through each part. Okay. The D1 will tackle the why, uh, the rational and the background, the projects eventually that you will use to build or to follow yours. Not really to follow, but you, you will use eventually a project that happened before, and you will use some results or some, some situation of this previous project to uh, do your uh, project, to build your project. Hello. Gee, this training course is so, so fun, so uh, a big thing. Oh no, it's, it's the same people, okay. Projects to be used. Consortium, the consortium is the, another word for the partnership, the group of organization working with you in the product. Well, I'm always referring working with you in the project, you can also be a partner, okay? Uh, believe me, it's very interesting to be a partner too. You learn a lot, you contribute a lot, and you, because being applicant, uh, applicant, being applicant of a project uh, with this dimension have certain financial rules that maybe your organization uh, can't comply right now, for, for now. My organization, for example, can't comply with the financial um, structure of a, such a big uh, project, maybe in, hopefully in two years. So uh, there is a part also uh, tackling the inve investigation that you've been doing Okay, you've been, you've been checking. Remember the initiating part? Okay, surveying, mapping, knowing what's going on, knowing if someone is working currently on the, on the subject or not, etc. Um, the part two is about defining the aims and the objectives, and we will see the difference between the aims and the objectives. Part D3, the methodology. How are you going to make all this happen to reach your uh, destination? Um, methodology and work plan. The work plan is uh, the, the, the machine, the motor, the muscles. The muscles maybe are more the money, but the work plan is really the, the structure which will tell you how things are going to happen. Okay? The steps. The steps, the steps, the content of the activities, the tasks, the who is going to do, etc. So the work plan is really the, uh, the core uh, tool, machine, that will, will make things happen. The timetable is part of the work plan. You have to be very fast, like Zorro. <laughs> um, D4, the European added value. You will understand the difference, for example, between the European added value and the European dimension and this kind of situations. Um, and, ta-da, first time, budget. You will understand that at that point, either you already have worked on your Excel table. This is a bit, at this point, it's a bit um, according to your way of working and your way of, of building the project. Because uh, remember, you should not start writing your project, the Word, Microsoft Word uh, document or budget, before having all this done on a draft plan. Okay? Draft. Draft means it's incomplete. So, when you're at D5, you have already a clear idea of the distribution of the, the budget and the work packages and all that stuff. What you are doing now is taking this information and putting this information here in the way that the, 
EACEA want to put it in. You understand that you are forced to put the information according to them, right? If you have to, using the documentation that they give to you, force you to do the, the way they do, okay? But before that, you do your way. You do how you, you want to do it. Some people start with the budget. They start putting the work package in, okay, 40 hours here, 80 hours there. I know people, very good project managers, they start, they start with the money. And then they explain about, okay? It depends. Um, so this, this is the structure of the part D. Oh, it's heavy. Okay? So, just to have, you, to have an idea of how it's, uh, you've been looking at the uh, document uh, in your hands. So, the, the title, the, the specific title is Project Characteristic. D1, why does the consortium wish to undertake this project, meaning not another one? Rational and background. This is the little, this, this part is the, the project that you might use, okay, to, to, to build your project. It means that, for example, if it's a project that has been, do, been uh, applied uh, under a European program, you will have uh, the, um, the reference number, eventually, this big time number, you know, blah, 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 blah. If it's not a project uh, within the European uh, Union uh, framework, well, just mention it without, with another reference number. Also, this is not mandatory, okay? You don't have to have a project before to start yours, I mean, but it's a possibility, yeah. Remember, stop me at any time. Huh? This is not a long, just after PIA, just Okay, give me just a second then. It's okay? Please? Yeah. You do not need to use a project that happened before to do yours. It's interesting to use, uh, well, you have to think it's difficult. Well, you can always have a brand new idea that nobody thought before. Nobody remembered to talk about this uh, uh, subject. So your project is so new, there is nothing behind. But there is a good chance that what you want to, to do, even if it's innovative, might use good results, good practices that happened in project before. And that is the result of your survey. When you have your idea, when you are initiating and you're surveying, you go to um, EVE database, you go to EST database, you go to uh, Google and you check. And there is a good chance that someone have uh, addressed this kind of topic. Yes? Well, a preparatory visit is not really a project. It's a meeting of partners. So, there, there's a part. There's a part where they ask you how the project was prepared. Maybe it's better to put it there. But I have to tell you something. What what you put here will not harm your project. Even if it's not really applicable, it won't harm it. So I would say, yes, put it. Put the number of the preparatory visit uh, application, and why not? It won't do harm, I think. But there is a, there is a part when, when they we will go through it, when they ask you, how did you start working together? So to answer you more uh, specifically, yes, put it. I would put it. I think it's uh, interesting to put it, even if it's a preparatory visit. 
But I would say that uh, what they, um, the, the right question here the one is if your proposal is based on the result of one more previous project. So I understand that it's quite specific. It's a project, so it's not a preparatory visit. So not necessary. It's not necessary, no. But um, as a uh, off the record, not very off the record tip, it's a good thing to have something to to take stock. How you say you take stock from things that happened before you and you multiply. It's a good thing. Sustainability, we'll see that. So, here the rationale of the setting up of the consortium, you see? The question you asked, Pia, there is here, for example, explain why the selected partner are best suited to participate and describe complementary uh, skills and competence uh, related to the so at this part uh, you can mention for example on on this project TSD I would sure, certainly mention the uh, preparatory visit at this point uh, investigation of the field you remember we've been we've been uh, going to the aims and objectives methodology oh yeah here methodology to achieve the objectives and the overall project, project management. So two important things. We'll, we'll go through it. European added value and budget and cost effectiveness. Okay, so let's start. We start by, with the beginning. Okay, that's the structure. No comments. <clears throat> okay. Part one, motivation. These terms are the terms used in the form. These are not my terms. My objective here is trying to give you another way of looking at it and understanding. So the motivation, obviously, is, well, the, the um, what, what, what fund, the fundamentals of what you want to do. And the motivation is obviously linked to a real, real need. You know and you can prove there is a need. Uh, people have uh, problems to find a job. Everybody knows that, right? It's obvious. Prove it. How can you prove it? Eurostats. Numbers. Okay? Eurostat is European. You have every country have its um, statistics um, agency. Okay? You see, everybody know. Sky is blue. Prove it. People will prove you sky is dark, black. You know, you have to prove things even beyond the obvious. And this is very important. Um, examples. Depends on your topic. If you're tackling, uh, like yesterday, I understood your activity was linked to immigration. Which kind of immigrant? Do you have a camembert, the French cheese, with how many from Somalia, how many from Brazil, etc.? Numbers. Um, employment rates. Um, documentation from uh, uh, known bodies about the situation. If your Ministry of uh, Employment 
uh, have a publication on the statement on the situation you are addressing this is concrete so the motivation is basically linked to the to the need to the issue to the situation you want to address and obviously when you are selecting you need it's because you want to change it it's not because okay let's talk about immigration no you want the situation to be before project after and obviously after the project it's better that's a motivation okay I came here and I understood not a lot of you knows about the Millennium Development Goals. Friday you will know, believe me. Because one of my objectives in this uh, event, besides my duties and my responsibilities, is to raise awareness on the Millennium Development Goals with you guys. You see? So, I will come back home knowing that we've been talking about that. And maybe you have the chance to go to the United Nations um, web link and, and check it out. Because this is quite important. So this is a tangible situation. There is a need. This need is uh, provoking some problems. And you want your project to bring a solution to this problem. So at the end of the project, the problem will be less a problem. Well, I don't think uh, it's possible to engage a project where you will uh, find a solution to raise uh, or, or to lower the unemployment rate. Good luck, because it's a complex thing. So when I use the example of employment rate, it's because it's very concrete, but uh, you have a lot of information numbers that you can use to explain the why. Um, yeah, here on the motivation, let me see if I have this written. Why these? Yes. Uh, why this problem? Obviously, it's not because you've been reading on the policy, on the information, there is a uh, problem with employment, then, okay, there's a problem with employment, let's do a project about it. No. You have your, pro your you identify your need, you have your uh, motivation, and by the way, I can prove that. It's not the contrary, okay? Um, also, it depends on your experience, on your expertise on what you've been doing on, in the activities that you've been developing in your organizations, okay? All that are tangible information to explain why you're willing to... Uh, um, I have no idea about, uh, about stem cells. I have a, an idea about what stem cells are. But if I want to, do a, to build a project on stem cells to solve some situation, well, I have absolutely no experience in stem cells. I'm, it doesn't, it's not possible. Okay, so why uh, rational you prove it? Why rational you have experience on the field? Sorry, Antonio. Why, etc. The why is not any why. It's really a concrete one. Um, also, you can mention that this is part of the strategy of the activities of the partners. It's part of the strategy. Because also they have experience in the field. Okay? This is another point. All this is a background. Just this. Okay, the, the political and the policies priorities, okay, now you can refer eventually something very concrete that uh, address and, and is linked to your project. If you want to build a project on uh, enhancing, improving, 
uh, getting better the, um, the computer proficiency of people so people can use computer really uh, better and better it's a very important policy in Europe it's actually a flagship of the European uh, 2020 um, policy mention it okay but don't mention it in a way we will do that because of that no you say you will express here well uh, we want to mention that also our project follows or answers to one policy that is blah 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 okay the way you write also is important uh, the burst of the project well in, in this part it's a part maybe a bit uh, uh, let's say um, philosophical I don't know but when, when, when you start to have the idea of the project either it's a conversation with experts experts either is um, it's an experience you had in a country well I, I'm using all, always uh, my my personage as an, as an example because I know what I've been doing but for example this global education field and the intercultural learning topic I decided to work with was born because of a, a Grunvig workshop I did in Romania and I, oh, I had some kind of an epiphany oh that's my field so try to express if possible how the birth of your project happened it's not something make it personal a bit uh, put put some some meat in the bone okay are you following me meat in the bone <laughs> maybe not a good image some vegetarian here um, well the project to be used it in eventually like uh, like I said you have a, a different database I recommend recommend uh, uh, Eve we will we will do it you will see how I I, I, I I have an example. You will see how to, to, to get it. Uh, by the way, <coughs> yeah, let's do it. Oh, I don't have internet access. It's okay. It's a pity because it's a very interesting project, this uh, psychology project. We will do it maybe later or tomorrow, I remember. Okay. Um, previous uh, setting up of the consortium, yes, we, we following in this part, background, we're following this part, which is the first sub part of D1. Okay? All the things that I've been referring here are here. Six thousand characters. They want you to give a good kickoff here okay it's a bunch of of characters but uh, believe me it's very uh, easy to overload she knows <coughs> I was sent 7,000 8,000 and I have to rewrite okay but it's very important you will hear me saying this is very important at the end everything is important but let's say that the D part is crucial as G part is crucial now about the setting up of the consortium that's where we are here oops setting up of the consortium previous experience you had together okay things you've been working on together out of a project okay with uh, one or two partners that you've been involved with um, this complementarity part is fundamental because obviously if all of you all of you 
have the same capacity, which is English. Six partners work only in English. What are you doing together? You're all the same. Complementarity means or complementarity is associated to competences, competences, skills that each partner have. They are expert in their field. They are expert in management, but these other ones are not very much. The surveying partner is an expert. It's a research center. They do that on a routine. But you, you not very much. The, um, the, uh, the, the, the partner responsible for the work, work package which is linked with the dissemination are specialists in marketing. Good. They will have a good idea for the logo. They know how to use the social media. But you, you are good at managing. Complementarity. The group of you partners make the puzzles. So the puzzle is not a puzzle like this. It's a puzzle like, you know the puzzle. OK? Uh, in this part, you have the description of the planned project activities, the working package. Okay, in this part it means that you will, let me show you uh, even, maybe it's even better to show you uh, concrete. Example. This is uh, the pro project I'm working on, started this year. See, part D, maybe faster. P1 Finland has a wide ranging experience from developing peer learning, blah, blah, blah. P2 Greece. Greece now it's not GR, it's EL, Elas. As uh, this experience and will be uh, managing uh, uh, yeah, you have the d description of, of uh, each partner. That's what I mean. Okay? Until this, this, this one is a 12 one. But in this one there are some associated partners. So you have uh, five will receive the money and the others will be subcontracted but they are mentioned so this is for you to have an idea of what we we mean it's difficult to understand now but uh, you have you know at, at the last the last uh, paragraph is the description of all the partners which are part of this part of the which is called the rational of the consortium. You choose these partners because they have these skills and competencies, which is something that you've been saying already in uh, part C. Part C, description of uh, the organization C1. Part C2, description of the skills and competencies of this, the staff involved. You're repeating yourself here. You're proving, you're showing your rationale. You're giving another way of explaining the situation with a more concise information. Okay? Va bene? Hmm. So previous experience, complementarity, 
planet project activities. You want, in part D1, to go global topic uh, specific partner, as I show, okay? You explaining the, why you, you are uh, putting yourself together, you saying what you're going to do together, and then the last part, partner by partner, you explain your uh, competences. So part, and then you have partner skill work package. You will see that, that we, you, this is, these are the links. So part D2 is aims and objectives. Well, in, in, in this, in this, um, in this part, you want to, you're going to be mad at me, huh? it's not working anymore? No? Uh. <clears throat> Focus, mean, mean really uh, clear, one sentence, aim, operational objective, and target group. The first, I recommend, the first sentence you will write in this part, the first sentence you will write, in one sentence you will say what's the aim, what's the operational objective, and who you are addressing in the first sentence. Which means, well, that's the moment uh, I use the internet to explain, so it's difficult for me to explain, but in this sentence you will, you will say concretely um, the, the, uh, the project intend to uh, solve uh, address, tackle this situation uh, abuse, abuse of uh, people uh, abuse of immigrants in the workplace that's the first part, the aim then objectives uh, the project intend to do this and more specifically to give them capacity to understand the legal law. This is a more specific objective. Maybe there is another one, another one, maybe two or three, but maybe better one. And uh, so the project intend to tackle the situation of immigration, to give them capacity to understand the law, and at this point, you will uh, specify more, uh, more clearly who you're talking to, particularly people coming from uh, uh, rural areas from Europe and Im immigrating to Italy. This is clear. I suggest the first sentence will be that. In just that sentence, the evaluator will understand what you're talking about. Confuse uh, uh, the general objectives with the particular objectives, and so the aim is, uh, is like a, a general objective. Yeah. So that's. Insane. I used an example, for example, uh, I used an example yesterday about uh, looking for a job in Italy. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is a uh, main thing: looking for a job, uh, looking for. Uh, so, so the aim is the general one. Yeah. So we usually this is the write top. the general yeah. objective and specific. Yeah. We don't use aims. Uh, in the past, I okay, you look for a job. This is the main aim. Objectives are you look for a job in the field of psychology. You look for a job in the field of psychology with the topic of uh, abused uh, elder people. These are specific objectives. Okay? So in the first sentence, yes. Enrico. Enrico. If the target group is too small, it can be um, a bad thing for the project. It's an interesting question. Sounds like a political. <laughs> well, obviously you want, you want to be specific, but you don't want to be too narrow. So you want to be specific 
and you want to be, uh, for example, if you address a situation on people with uh, special needs, then maybe you can put a list of people of special needs. But at this point, at the first sentence, just put the global target group. You will have time to describe more specifically. Now you want the, the evaluator to get focused. Okay? He, he's looking at a picture and he sees either a horse or a chicken or a house, but he doesn't know if it's a house with, uh, I don't know, with what it's inside. But okay, we are talking about a house. This is a house. Now that's the purpose that I suggest in this part, uh, the first sentence. In one sentence, these three things. Um, this, now we're talking about we're talking about specifically this box, okay? This is the box I'm talking about on this slide. So once you've been, once you write the, um, the first sentence, my suggestion is to go on a specific paragraph which are short paragraphs on key operational objectives. You're going to help these guys to integrate in Italy coming from rural areas by giving them, training them in Italian language, in uh, culture of Italian uh, regions, in um, basic skills. So these are specific objectives. This is, and I prefer to use operational objectives often because um, it gives you an idea that what we mean by specific objective is tangible. Okay. After that, my suggestion is to go to a clear information and how the situation will change. Make a point in showing how your project will change the situation. There. Um, be practical. Our, our project will uh, improve. Imagine the situation, for example, in France uh, foreigners can't vote. People that are not French can't vote at the local level. But maybe you have a project uh, which uh, will uh, propose recommendations to the policymakers to make that change. So you get a bunch of policymakers and show them how it's important for people that are not the natives to vote also locally because they are part of the economy. You know, at one point in France, if you didn't have Portuguese uh, people on the construction, <laughs> it was a bit difficult to, for some, some part of the, uh, uh, France to, to develop. A lot of people from uh, Portugal went to France to, to work in the building. Uh, more than 50% of the people that worked in the construction of the Universal Exposition in Lisbon in 98 came from Africa. When the exposition stopped, what to do with them? Well, it's not fair. You use them and then you, what? Make a point to change the situation concretely. How? Indicators Qualitative, quantitative. You will improve the Italian capacity of communication of this guy by 40%. You will make possible people to be able to go to the um, city hall and be able to defend themselves on situation because of their water uh, sewage is not working. 
Have you ever um, uh, witnessed, uh, sometimes I'm, I'm, I'm at the city hall because I work a lot with policy makers, and I have this, these people uh, from uh, gypsies, they come, hey, our sewage is horrible, it smells, they go and, and uh, yeah, 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 you guys are gypsy anyway. What? So, indicators, okay? Should I mention something else? The microphone? Not, not really an outcome at this point. It's more how the situation will change. For example, uh, if you know that um, there's only 1% uh, of this group, target group, that are capable of communicating in Italian. Because there is, a, like I said, the rational statistics. In, in 100 people, only one person is capable of... So this guy is kind of uh, the leader of the community, because he can... So, and this would be an indicator, so the change, a qualitative indicator, this kind of... Uh, the change can be change. your project, by addressing these 100 people, Mm -hmm. will make possible that 40, 40 people of this group mm. will be able to do the same. That the, so after the project, you enhance, you raise sure. mm -hmm. the quantity of people capable of doing something. And this is an indicator. You are talking about indicator, well, quantitative indi indicator. The indicator in, in this case I'm using is the capacity okay. to communicate in Itali Italian. Now just to understand the dif difference between these, these uh, instruments, the indicators, and the outcomes. So, and if you make some example uh, for the instruments in uh, case of uh, outcomes. I know um, there are uh, some, um, I don't know in Italian too, on truth. Uh, chi mi può aiutare nel senso che ci sono degli, mh, delle tabelle anche uh, che si usano uh, in, nella progettazione per richiamare gli indicatori e i risultati anche cioè lui prima faceva l'esempio degli ISO di questi standard uh, some, uh, about some standard of indicator uh, and outcomes and the difference I I agree with you. You can say that the result of your project will be this change. It's, so, it's fair to say, yes. You will see that uh, outcomes and results that are basically used in this project management are more linked to things that you build as a product or, uh, you know, more than, uh, um, more than uh, a result of change. But it's fair to use this word too. For example, I would say that the before you have one percent of the population population capable to, to to deal with the situation at the local level, you have your project and you have after. And you have 40% of people. This is a change. You can say it, it's, it's an outcome. But maybe you can also say that within the project, a training course, uh, lessons, etc., are also outcomes. So, but it's, I mean, it's fair to say. Did I answer to? It depends on the application, because when I, I draft on grooming or some the others... Uh yeah, I have to, I have to re refer that I'm specifically talking about Grunvig multilateral project. This is, let's say, the main thing we're debating this week. In other situations, it might be a bit different. But this is really all about GMP. Um, okay, European added value. Oh, first, methodology. Sorry, I forgot this one.
Well, on the methodology, it's basically how you're going to work. How you're going to make uh, the activities happen, how you're going to organize yourself, such as, for example, well, you can have um, um, a structure that is basically you manage and you deal with, or you can have eventually a group of partners working together and bringing you the information. I mean, this is a structure you will have to explain here how you will work together. It's kind of a procedure of working together. When you have, uh, for example, um, a centralized situation, you do that, you do that, you do that, or you have a transversal, and okay, so bottom up, bottom up or up, top down, I mean, it's you to decide how you want to work together. You have a, a meeting, Skype conference, I mean, all the methodology. And obviously, it has to, have to be concrete and practical. Okay? You can't imagine a project without communication, for example. How will you communicate? You only have, um, I don't remember, I think 3,000 characters, but it's quite important and complete. You also will put there milestones, big time uh, results within the calendar. Okay? We reach here, this is a milestone. We have this done. We have the survey done, we have the work package number uh, three done, etc. Uh, and there you will also put the basic things that we've been addressing yesterday and the day before, such as a communi communication protocol. You can express here that you will use, like I use with uh, Synergia, uh, Google Drive. There's no problem in mentioning commercial names. I don't think so. I'm not sure, but <laughs> I don't think so. Okay? Um, you can eventually mention how you're going to structure the teams. Is it uh, one, one, my flip chart is the door. <laughs> when we leave the, oops. <laughs> you can imagine that you have one coordinator, one person that will report, you know, one person responsible for uh, um, the uh, organization of the work. So this is the team structure of each partner. So you, you can say that um, as, uh, for example, uh, uh, the, the management plan of the, of the, the, the project will be um, the management team of each partner will be organized with one coordinator, one reporter, etc. Reporter, no, but one, uh, the, the person uh, responsible to uh, bring the, the information together and send it to the responsible of whatever the topic is, okay? So this is a team structure, okay? Methodology is uh, so wide, you can, there's so many different uh, way of working together, okay? Uh, Depart. This is D4. Let's, let's, let's uh, read what is written. Please describe Please describe the benefits of and need for European, European cooperation. Hmm. Here, there's, there's, um, there's uh, different things that I would like to, to mention. First of all, there's the fact that you can prove that the situation is quite different in, in all the countries that will participate as partner in the project. And this is not right. This should be uh, balanced. So the problem that you have in your country is also a problem that, ha that exists in another, another country at a different level. 
Okay, so you make the connection. I don't, I don't, you know, you are not here. I'm sorry about that. But the other day, you remember the circles? Okay, local context, European context. European dimension means there is a, a, a difference between the memberships, member states, and it is valuable to tackle the situation because there is an interest in other member states. So we can, we can say that the situation of your project have a European added value because it is of relevance for the other member states. If you, I don't know uh, your region, but um, we have a situation, for example, in Portugal with uh, olive trees. This is not relevant uh, in this project, in this program for the uh, other member states. Other member states don't even have uh, olive trees. This is a very uh, specific thing in Portugal. Well, there is always a way to link things, but <laughs> you know, it must be relevant for other member states. So if it's relevant for other member states, then there is, it's relevant to be, to be dealt, to be addressed at a European level. We can mention also, uh, well, that I said, the um, identified similarities. What they're doing in Turkey about this issue is the same thing we're doing in Portugal. And by the way, it's kind of the same thing doing in Finland. Similarity. Good practices. What else? It can be possible within your project, and it should be important within your project, that one of the outcome would be a recommendation on the subject you're addressing. A set of information that your project provided and this set of information that your project provided is relevant to be known by uh, the competent, some competent bodies at European level. Either it's a uh, the CEDEFOP or the European Training Foundation, okay? Another one. Go beyond the project itself. Instead of looking at, okay, you, you addressing a need, a, a situation here, but look around and, and see what are the connections with this problem also. We, maybe with other target groups that are not in your project, with other um, stakeholders. Try to, to think of your project also in a larger scale. Obviously, you concentrated in what you're doing, but you can mention that, um, well, we, we, we addressing the situation of immigrants. Um, uh, coming from rural areas in, in Italy, and this will have an impact, an effect on the economy at the local level, because uh, a new competence, new companies, new products will be created. And by the way, this will create new jobs. See, nothing to do with your project, but it uh, embrace other uh, outcomes. Okay? Oh. Cultural diversity is also something important to refer at this point, at this moment, because when you addressing a, a, a situation, you have no way to avoid that your perception of the situation will be different in Turkey, different in Finland, different in France, than your perception. The same problem. Immigration here is not immigration in Turkey, believe me. Immigration in Portugal is a different immigration from Finland, etc. So you must consider here a way to explain that your project is considering the cultural diversity of the partners, member states, countries, to, to, which will be part of the project activities. Okay? 
Um, hello. Hmm. Some announcements for tomorrow. Um, on the budget, I'll try to be as um, quick as possible because I'm so behind the schedule. Midi. Any accountant here? No, no accountants. Okay, so I can say I can say everything. I <laughs> just kidding. Come on. Um, well, when when you refer to well, let, let's see, let's look at the uh, description first, so you have a good idea of what they they saying. It's a bit fastidious, but. Okay. Please describe the strategy adopted to ensure that the proposed result, results and objectives will be achieved in the most economical way. First part. Explain the principles, the, the rules um, of budget allocation, budget allocation, budget distribution um, amongst the partners. Why are you giving 20,000 to this one and 40,000 to this one? Indicate the, the arrangements adopted uh, for financial uh, management. Are you going to send the money to your partner all the 100% budget? Or first you send 20%, give me the result, more 20%, give me the result. This is an arrangement. Um, this is what they ask here. So let's have a look of an interpretation of uh, this. Um. Remember, this is very important. What I'm telling you is my experience, my interpretation, the reading of the materials uh, that are available. Uh, remember the cultural diversity. My perception is your perception, etc. When we're talking about mathematics, huh, mathematics, but when we're talking about interpretation, it's not 100% like this that you have to do. You have also your background, okay? But what I, what I mean with that is there are some basics, some structure, that here you have to follow, to apply. So the strategy means the way you are going to use the money. And actually, the way you are going to use the money here written is an explanation a bit of what you have put on the tables. On the tables, on the Excel file table, you will put the numbers. Here you're explaining a bit uh, in, a, in a way that you're writing it, why you did the w this way, why you put this amount of money on the work package of testing, etc. So, by economy, they really mean the less money possible, the maximum impact possible. Remember my example? 100 euro, euros, I get a job in Italy. Yes. Big impact. I didn't even need to, 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 to do a trip to Italy. So this is the... Um, it also means the less, the less time possible on each work package, because obviously it's linked with the staff. The more uh, time you use your staff on the activity, the more cost you will involve in the activities. Okay? So... Well, if, if I had to summarize, I would, be, uh, I would say the, the minimum resources for the maximum results. I'm very sorry to say it's a bit theoretical, but that's what I would, uh, I would say. So, a strategy, the budget allocation, which is the why you're organizing the budget in that way according to the partner's activities in the project, so 
budget work package partner. The management of this money, I don't have any specific rules. I, I mean, if I decided to work with uh, Synergia, I'll tell you, I'll send the money to them. Go take the money and do, do your job. Because I know you, I trust you, I know you're a very serious professional person. That's my arrangement. If I have to, and uh, it's the same thing with uh, Alex's. Uh, if I have to work with someone, some partner that I trust but I'm not so confident, maybe I would propose an arrangement that uh, give me some security. Don't hesitate to say what you feel and what you think and what you want to do. It's your responsibility. It's business. I don't, I trust you, but I want this arrangement. And all this, obviously, you don't have any problem to write anything here because you did that work before with your partners. You've been working on your project, you have your draft, you have everything explained. <laughs>